Jesse. Hi, hi. Okay, Jesse was convinced that there was somebody outside her house. And she just ran to the front door and started barking and barking and barking. And now she's obviously still convinced that there's somebody out there. She's just going... (sighs) 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 She knows that somebody's out there. I keep telling her it's the neighbors, but... Yeah, it's totally the neighbors. Right, so there was not going to be a stitch along today because our flight got delayed. I think that's our neighbors. Oh my god, hold on. David? Is that you, like, making a bunch of noise? Yeah. Because Jesse's, like, barking, like, it's people outside. Oh, she's, like, convinced that somebody's outside, and she's, like, (gasps) All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. (gasps) I'm telling you, she's convinced that somebody's out there. It's just (gasps) David. (laughs) Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do the bike um, basket for tonight. Hi, Meg. Hi, Louise. First time you've been able to join. I'm so excited to have you. You have no idea. So this one might be a little bit longer, but that's only because you need to make some choices for yourself. So um, I'm going to show you what kind of choices you have to make right now. Um, In the bicycle pattern, where the basket is, Um, I just kind of did like willy nilly, like any kind of lines here to show that there's a a basket. So what you need to choose is how wide or tight you want your basket to be. I hope that makes sense. So what I mean by that is that sometimes you can have a basket that's like this. So straight across and then the next one might not be until here, here, here. Or you can do it really tight so it looks like, it almost looks like this. Okay. Hi. (laughs) Welcome back. Yay. I made it. I made it here. So what I'm going to do is I might do one kind of stitch now. And then on the other one, do a more looser stitch. And then just maybe post a picture of it in my stories. So what we're going to do is get your brown. So you can't tell it in this kind of light because this is just like warm kitchen light. It's 820. So it's quite late. I'm back, Dawn. Um, And you're going to get quite a bit. Get a little bit more than you think that you need. All six strands and it's the brown. So whatever brown that you choose. It can be quite dark. It can be light does not matter. Um, And what we're going to do is we're going to do the vertical lines this way, and then we're going to weave in the horizontal lines so that it's like a basket weave. So I had a pattern, and I could have sworn that I didn't sell it yet, but apparently I did, so I can't show you. Um, So I'll just show you on this one. So what you're going to do like I said, decide how far apart you want your vertical lines to be. The further apart the vertical lines will be, that's going to be like a looser woven basket. I hope it makes sense. Okay, so we're going to go from here and just kind of fill this one in right here. So I like to do the middle first as much as I can, like to gauge the middle. I'm gonna do mine quite, you want them to be evenly spaced, as evenly spaced as you can. That's gonna be straight later, promise. Okay. 
And if you notice, the top's not very even. So this will be a time when you might want to make the top even, okay? Let's see if Spotify will let me because earlier it just kicked me off. Hmm. If it's if it's quiet enough, I can normally get away with it, but if not, it gets a little bit arsy with me. Okay. So we're going to make long straight stitches for the vertical stitches. Hi guys. Um, same way I start all, just do a little knot and I'm going to start at the bottom. Whoop. And you're going to go all the way to the top. So this is a weaving stitch. I'm like really mixtape Kate. Hey girl. Hey. You want to try to keep these, don't pull too tight, which I already have done. So the question is, who's all caught up on the pattern and ready to do this part now? How was your trip? So many people want to know how <laughs> was my trip. It was absolutely amazing. We had so much pizza, so much pasta. It was fan fantastic. Robin says that she is all caught up and ready. Meg is. Lucy, not ready. Actually making, is saying hi. I don't think she's saying that she's ready. So this one, I think I'll be a little bit looser. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Stitch My Heart is doing a full catch up today and tomorrow. With my pink hoop, I definitely, I definitely have a lot to do still. But my big thing is the colors. I can't choose the colors. So every time I sit down to do it, I take probably four times as long as I should because I can't, I can't choose the colors, guys. KV Stitches, I love that I can actually watch a live since I'm in the States. I know, I know. I keep saying I'm going to do one in the nighttime, but the light is just not that good. Like, I just don't think that's that great. So it's like way better in the daytime. I need to get one of those um, like daylight bulbs and just put them in the kitchen. But it's like if you do one, you have to do all of them. And I've got one, two, three, four, six, six lights in here. So we were going to do it the last time that we went to Ikea. We were like, let's just change them all. It'll be nice and bright. No more yellow. And we were prepared to pay any of the, like all of the money, so it didn't matter. We just were like, we just want it to be light and bright and airy. And um, I'll show you later, but they're like the big round, like a bulb, like, that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. The big round bulb bulbs. And they only had one, so that put a damper into my plans. So on this part, just kind of make it up. It's totally fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So then if, after you have all of your vertical lines, you can do them as close as like literally one per thing, meaning like one, one string apart. So they don't have to be so spaced out. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come back down. I like to start from the bottom and work my way up and you're going to literally weave in and out 
of each of the lines that you've just made. Let's see if I can make it straight. So I'm gonna go under first, over, under, And then what I like to do is take the back of my needle and push it down. Cause you can tell that even this one is too loose. So maybe I didn't make it tight enough there. That's all right. You're gonna take your needle and push it down. Okay. And what I like to do, which other people sometimes don't like to do, is I will put it down where I want it to go because I want to follow this shape here. So if you just come up and do it again, it's going to only be as wide as these are, whereas I want it to follow the shape. So I'm going to go and put my needle down at the very end. You're going to go over under each and every other one. So I'll show you again. I feel like you can't see this so, so well. So this one I've gone up and you're gonna do the opposite of what you've just done. Is that a little bit better maybe? So you can see I've gone, I came up here. I went under, over, under, over, under, over, under over, under, over, under, and I went down because I want to do the shape of my basket. I don't want it to only go to the end of each of my lines. Does that make sense? So now this one, I'm going to do the opposite. So this one right here, I went under. This one, I'm going to go over. And it's also good if you have a blunt needle, if you, if that works for you. So you can see here how it's made that weaving look. Let me know if you have questions. Let me know if you understand or not. It is a little bit like difficult to show but that's why I started doing the video last last Monday and I was like nope this is not gonna work I need people hi hi Melissa Melissa and just take it one at a time if you need to girl you're about to do it right now she never weaved before, and she's going to do it right now. Actually, we did weave before because you did weaving on the wagon wheel. So don't lie to me. <laughs> so this one is finishing. How am I ever going to choose basket colors? Any color basket you want. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be brown, it can be white, it can be pink, whatever. So this end one, I finished with an over. Do you see? So I'm going to put it back down into the fabric. Okay. And I'm just going to push them down. You might have to go back, um, especially on the very first one, because my basket is slightly curved, which means that a straight line is not gonna get that little curve on the bottom. So I might have to go back and add another one there, okay? Please ask questions if you have to. If you don't get it, there's no shame in asking questions because odds are someone else has the same question. So I'm going to do one more way the other way so you can see again. I'm going to go up again here. And I'm trying to get mine as close as I can, but you don't have to. You can even make them farther apart. Oops. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. 
so that you can see some of the white fabric behind. Okay, so it's literally, you're just weaving back and forth, but it's up to you how you want them to look. So like I said before, they can be quite, you just go up for the vertical lines, Melissa, you just go up, one big long stitch, and then over, down, up, down, just back and forth. That's okay. So this one, it's hard to show. This one I did over, yeah? You can tell it's over. So the first one I'm gonna start under. It's always the opposite. You wanna have that woven look. And you can even see here, it is over, under, over, under, over, under, all the way across, yeah? I can pull it. Well, that one's quite tight. Let me get the sword out. Okay. So places. Oh, thank you. So places like this, you're going to have a bit of a trouble because it goes around the shape of the leaf. Yeah, so because we're only working in straight lines, once I get to this one, I will have to go just to here and then put my needle back down. Does that make sense? And then I can put it back up again here and continue with my over, under, over, under. So it'll be the same for here. This one I'll only going over, under, over, under three strands because it's just these three that are visible making sure that you go down in the fabric and up in the fabric so that it looks like it's a part of the pattern, not kind of up off the pattern like an actual weave would be. Oh, this one's so hard to explain. But we'll see. We'll see how we do, you know? So this one, since I'm stuck by the leaf, and the last one, do I have a knot? No. The last one was under, so this one I'm just going to go over, and I'm going to stick it back down. And this is kind of where your pattern, you'll either make or break it, because you want these lines to look like they're straight across, because basket weaves are straight across. <laughs> they don't ever go like this. They don't ever go like this. They're never wonky like that. So you kind of want them to go to go straight. So I'm just going to quickly fill up this one. This little area because I know it's only one stitch. Yeah. Again, let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to clarify. I notice um, for the ones that I go under, I tend to go really close to this leaf because it's easier to go under this way and, and pull it when there's nothing here than there would be for me to go under this way and then have all of these stitches to try to play with and get out of the way, etc., etc. So, like, don't make it difficult on yourself. If it's just an overstitch, then just... Do a little tucked one like that. Okay. So now I can get started with the rest. Let me just bring this up closer. Can you see it any better that way? It's over under. Here. Because my line, my vertical line went into this leaf. So for this section, 
I've just had to fill that in by itself. Yeah? And the other ones, I'm holding this with one hand, so I'm sorry if it's wobbly. The other ones are all weaving a basket, over, under, over, under, and then the next row is opposite. Okay. Okay. I hope, <laughs> I hope I'm explaining it right. <laughs> oh, Tori. So... I'm using six strands, Melissa, yeah. So here, I'm gonna come up in the middle. And the only thing that you need to think of is the row below it, did you go over or under? Because you wanna do the opposite, yeah? So here, I went over, so my first stitch here is gonna be under this one, over, under, over, under, over, yeah? Okay. If you have to turn it sideways to make it easier to go in and out, you can do that as well. Because I'm gonna do that just now. Jesse's decided that it's playtime. I'm gonna do that first. I think the best way for this to look consistent is to just keep your spacing the same. So I've done four here. They're all, I'm gonna make it closer. They're all quite evenly spaced. None of them are kind of s squished together at the bottom. Uh, obviously, I haven't done the top, so you can't see that. Um, but you want to keep them all consistent. You don't have to do... Okay, um, Lizetta. I don't know your real name. I only know Lizetta. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> what you can do is you can, if you have enough space, you can always squeeze another row of stitches in there. So she's just said, I just realized I did both the first two rows the same, dope. What you can do is you can squeeze one in if you have space and make the bottom one just go down lower like that. Or you can undo it, it's up to you. But sometimes with weaving, with weaving especially, I'm like, I'm not doing that again. Not that I don't like it. It's just that it's like sometimes it's difficult to get your needle over and under and over and under all those times, all those times. The effect is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Baskets, picket fences, regular fences, um, woven rugs, things like that. Mm. I'm going to go down. Okay. Lizetta is your real name. Oh, I love that. Okay, the other mistake I see happening a lot, especially with myself, is I'll go through them. You don't want to go through them. You want to weave completely under. So you this is like my biggest pet peeve, is when people push their fingers up like this through the fabric. I don't know why I hate it. I hate it so much. But with weaving, it's really good because you can really get your needle, make sure that it's under each one of these. Because one little wrong one, you're going to be really cursing yourself later. You're going to be like, this is the worst. Okay, any other questions? Because I really don't want to keep you so long. One, it's Saturday night. I mean, I'm not doing anything. I'm literally just unpacking. So it's not a me thing. It's a you thing, okay? But it, it, this is like a lengthy stitch. So you can tell I've only done five on the bottom. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, eight on the side. And it has taken me 
ages. So I really don't want to keep you all night. Lucy says, Jesse, we missed you. Melissa said, are we doing something around the edge of the basket? Yes, we are. So if your edge, I'll do it close again, is not like very crisp like this, don't worry. If it looks more like this side, <laughs> don't worry. It'll be okay. Um, but if you find that like along the very, very bottom, there's a big gap of white, you might want to start here, meaning come up through the fabric here and just do one row that maybe ends there, if you know what I mean. And the same is up here. If you have to add one more stitch or something, that's fine. Right, so I'll do one more and then I'll let you guys go. Because I missed you. I missed stitching. I feel like tomorrow I'm gonna be upset that I did this in the yellow light because I'm not really sure what color brown I chose. I think tomorrow I'm going to be like, regret. So again, my tips are don't pull too tight, keep them consistent, and make sure you're doing over, under, over, under. And then the opposite for the next row. I don't want that there. I want it a little bit up. Okay, so I'll leave it on one more minute. If you have any more questions, feel free to type them in. Yeah, don't don't be afraid to like take it out. So mine, the bottom where I inserted it was looking like that. So obviously I want to take it out and make sure that it's straight across because it really does make a difference. Okay. Alrighty, well that's it from me then. The basket weave stitch. Melissa, you are so welcome. She said, thank you for hosting this. It's been so much fun. Like, I think I'm the one that's having the most fun out of everybody. I'm not going to lie. And my husband, David, is now saying, um, we have to make sure that we get home so that you can do a live for your fans. I'm like, my fans. I don't have fans. What are you talking about? They're all friends. <laughs> They're like all my friends. I feel like you guys are all my friends. Not fans. We're all just friends. We're all hanging out. We all like to stitch. It's good. I like that. Oh, Lucy, I miss you too. I feel like I feel like I'm already planning my next one because this was so fun. So, fan friends, Don. <laughs> Not fans. I feel like that's so weird. Like. I like literally every time that someone comments or anytime someone likes something like you guys are like all, all my friends I don't like saying like friend like fans or customers or like followers I don't think that's it has to be both ways you know like a, a friendship partnership <laughs> all right supporters yes but more more than that all right well I'll let you guys go have a great Saturday night um if you have any questions feel free to message and I'll be hanging around for a while to answer any that you've got all right have a great night and I'll talk with you tomorrow bye <laughs>